Hello and welcome to the PC Security Channel. Now, going off of a popular top comment on one of my videos, hackers can't hack you if you hack them first. So in this video, we will be talking about offensive security and penetration testing, how you can get started with it, why it's important, and how it affects cybersecurity. If you're coming from Windows, you might think of malware as the primary cybersecurity threat. These files, these executable files, you can accidentally run that can screw up your system, encrypt your files, steal your data, or do something nasty. But malware is really the tip of the iceberg, even when it comes to Windows systems and attacks. Because at the end of the day, it is just a tool that is used by an attacker to gain access to your system or to compromise your system in some way. Now, obviously, the purpose of this video is purely educational to give you an understanding of the attacker's framework and also realize that offensive security is a big part of cybersecurity, which involves trying to find weaknesses or exposed things within your network before the bad guys do. A very comprehensive task and it involves a lot of detailed analysis, which is why you will probably want to use a dedicated OS distribution that's built specifically for it. This is going to be a distro of Linux, like Kali Linux by Offensive Security, or Black Arch Linux, Parrot Security maybe, and possibly Remnox if you just want to do malware analysis. If you're an absolute beginner, I would recommend getting started with Kali Linux since it's one of the easiest to use. You will also need to set up a virtual machine. Now you can do that for free with VirtualBox. I've made a full tutorial on how to do so, link in the description. Once you've done that, you can go ahead into downloads and uh, you can get the 64-bit installer or the 64-bit live image. Now, if you are going to use a virtual machine with VirtualBox or VMware, you can always just scroll down and get the direct VM image that's pre-built for you. For example, if you want to get 64-bit VirtualBox, just go ahead and click here. And then you can just download this. And this is just going to be a 2.2 gigabyte file, which you can directly then import into VirtualBox. And that'll give you the full operating system pre-configured. It will have a default login and password, as mentioned over here. And you can get started with that. I've already got a workstation set up, so we're just going to load into it. This is exactly what you're going to see as well when you run it the first time. So we're just going to go with uh, GNU Linux and it should load into the actual operating system. And as you can see, now we have login, so we'll just enter the credentials from the website. At this point, some of you may be wondering, what's all this about Linux? Doesn't everyone use Windows or Mac? Well, the end users might, but what you have to realize is every single service you use, like Spotify or Apple Music, Amazon, Google, all of this is just software running somewhere, right? And the cloud is just someone else's computer. And in the real world, most servers actually run Linux. So Linux is a pretty common operating system for sysadmins and people who often have to deal with cybersecurity problems, which is why you might find me bemused sometimes when people say, just switch to Linux and cybersecurity is over. <laughs> a huge chunk of cybersecurity is based around Linux. In fact, even if you look at vulnerabilities, I think Linux has more vulnerabilities discovered and patched all the time than Windows. And that is not to say that you can't use these distributions to test security on Windows. You absolutely can. Now I'll give you a very quick overview of some of the tools that are in here. As you can see, if we just click on the uh, start button, you will see that we have different stages of performing pen testing already listed. So we've got information gathering, vulnerability analysis. So it's actually quite comprehensive. But a great tool to start with is Nmap. Now, N here stands for network. So as you can probably guess, this helps you map the network and find different devices that are on it, potentially open ports, ways that an attacker could gain access. But before you can use Nmap, you need to find the address of the machine you're trying to get into or scan. So we're going to go ahead and do something else. We'll go into information gathering, do a DNS analysis with DNS enum. 
Now this is going to help us enumerate the different hosts or machines associated with a certain website. So let's try this on our website, tpsc.tech. So we'll just say DNS enum tpsc.tech. And as you can see, instantly it gives us the name servers, the mail servers for tpsc.tech. As you can see, this is an Outlook server. So let's just take this as an example and try to do an end map here. Have to get used to different key shortcuts. So for example, shift insert is paste. And we instantly get the result that the host is down. If it's really up, but blocking our ping probes, try dash pn. So that's exactly what we're gonna do. All right, so the end map is done and it looks like all thousand scanned ports on this address are filtered. So let's try the other one. All right, so the scan is done again. And this time there are 999 filtered ports, but we came across one open port, which is 53 TCP. And this is perfectly normal as well for a domain. But sometimes finding an open port where it shouldn't be could be valuable information from a pen testing standpoint. But of course, this is just the first step. Next, you probably want to do some vulnerability analysis, try to find what information you can gain, check if the open port can actually be exploited, and then you can also evaluate the type of damage that you could do, including a potential malware attack. Now, something to keep in note here is that you should never do this for public services because you don't want to intrude on people's privacy or security without their permission. And as it says, when you open Kali Linux, with great power comes great responsibility. But there is a way to play with this stuff and learn offensive security without getting into trouble or causing any. And that's where our partners for this video, Hack the Box, come in. Hack the Box is an educational platform that has gamified offensive security or hacking. And I would actually encourage all of you to try your skills here. And to do that, all you have to do is click on join now. And guess what? That is a challenge in itself. You can't sign up without the invite code. And to get the invite code, you have to hack into this page and find it. This is very similar to the CTF or reverse engineering challenges that we had on Discord. In security terms, CTF means capturing a flag. It's like solving a puzzle to get to the next stage. In this case, the puzzle is finding the invite code. But where do you get started? Um, maybe you want some help, so then you can click here. So to start off, you could do something like press F12 on Chrome, and this is going to give you the details for the page, the actual HTML code, and since it says you could check the console, maybe we should click on console. And as you can see, we've got the first step of the challenge. It says keep calm and hack this box. And if you explore this a bit further, you're going to be able to get an invite code and log into this page. So try this out and let me know in the comments if you made it. Now I'm not supposed to show you how to get in, so that's up to you. But I can show you what happens when you do get in since I already have an account. Once you're logged in at app.hackthebox.eu, you're ready to start playing machines and challenges. Now there's two ways you can connect to get started. If you go over to the top right and click on connection settings, you will see OpenVPN or Pwnbox. OpenVPN allows you to connect to the Hack the Box machines using direct VPN access, which means you'll be using your own system to connect to these machines and trying to hack them. You can just go ahead and select a lab from here, depending on your region, and then you can go ahead and select one of the servers. Once you download the VPN configurations, you can use OpenVPN to connect, and then you're ready to start playing the machines. But hey Leo, what if I don't have all this fancy operating system set up? No worries, you can actually start hacking right away with Pwnbox. So if we go back, we can click on Pwnbox, which is your own web-based Parrot Linux instance to play on the labs. So you can click on this and it'll give you an option to select a location. So I'm just gonna click United Kingdom because that's the one that's closest to me. And all you have to do is start Pwnbox. As you can see, we've got the instance running and we can just click on Open Desktop 
And as you will see, this is a full operating system running directly from the browser. So it doesn't matter what system you have, how slow it is, you can directly use Pwnbox to start hacking. Now, this is, of course, a pre-configured instance of Parrot OS. It's already got all the tools that you would need, like Burp, Durbuster, GoBuster, Sublime, and Map. Everything's pre-installed and you can just go ahead and start playing around with some of these tools. Look, they even have PyCharm in case you need to debug some of your Python scripts. If we want to open Burp Suite, we can go ahead and do that. It's got the community edition installed. And there you go, we can get started with a temporary project and begin pen testing. This is really low latency, only 10 milliseconds for me, and it feels just as responsive as using a local VM. So for a lot of you, this is going to be an amazing way to get started with using these tools, learning pen testing without even having to set anything up on your own system. You don't need VirtualBox, you don't need VMware, you can just log into your Hack the Box account and do all of this using their Pwnbox platform. Now, once you're in, you can start playing with CTF. You can either do the challenges or you can connect to one of the machines. Now, the machines can be sorted and selected depending on whatever you're looking for. So they've got a rating for difficulty. They can also be sorted by release date, name, or you can even select what operating system they're on. So you can specifically select Windows if you wanna hack into Windows systems, you can select Linux if you're interested in that, OpenBSD, FreeBSD, whatever you like. And as soon as you find something that you're interested in, all you have to do is just select it and click on join this live machine. And then you're given an IP address. And now we can go back to say our Pwnbox instance and just copy and paste this IP address into something like Nmap to get started with hacking the system. You'll be having fun and developing skills all at once. As much as all of this may seem like it's in a domain of its own and has nothing to do with any other computer skills you might have learned, it's not really that. Pen testing and offsec is all about understanding operating system internals, networking fundamentals, especially if you're trying to exploit something over the network, you need to be familiar with the OSI model how data is actually transferred, how authentication happens, different types of handshakes. And it's one of those areas where the more knowledge you have about computer science in general, the further you're going to get. So go ahead, try Hack the Box. Let me know if you're able to make it past the first challenge. If you're a cybersecurity student or aspiring professional, this is going to help you a lot when it comes to understanding attackers and real world cybersecurity. If you're a regular user, hopefully this gives you some insight as to how an attack happens or where it originates and why you need to take security seriously. Because at the end of the day, it's not just about malware. Malware is just the last stage of the process that you see on your system. With many attacks, the main part of the process is actually gaining access to your system before deploying the malware. And a motivated attacker can easily exploit vulnerabilities within your system or your network to do so. So again, for those of you who ask, if I only click on these websites and I only download these files, can I still get malware? The answer is almost certainly yes, if you have a motivated attacker after you. Now, the good news is you probably don't. But if you are an organization where people might be tempted to attack you, everything, including your firewall, your router, open ports on the network comes into question. And in many cases, those may be vulnerable to a variety of attacks. So once again, patch your systems, make sure you have the latest updates. Don't forget your backups. You can check out Hack the Box using the link in the description. This is Leo. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to the PC Security channel. Let me know if you want to see more videos like this. And as always, stay informed, stay secure.